Hey guys, Spartan here with something completely different. Yes, today I'm going to be bringing you a top 10 list for Darkest Dungeon. That being, in case you haven't read the title somehow, I don't know. The top 10 worst trinkets in Darkest Dungeon. Now, you could easily just say, oh, all these very common trinkets are the worst ones in the game. Because they're very common, they have the worst effects, they have the least impact. But no, for this list I'm going over both the impact of the trinkets the downsides, and how hard it is to get the trinket, or how late in the game you're going to have to be before you get it. So, let's just kick this list off with number 10. And the last number 10 place, meaning this is the best of the trinkets, we have the Fanged Spear Tip. This is a rare trinket for the Shieldbreaker, and it gives 35% damage versus marked, and then a flat minus 10% damage. So basically, this gives you plus 25% damage versus marked, but against everything else you lose 10% damage. So, the obvious problem with this being is that, well, if you're not attacking marked targets, you're just getting a minus 10% damage, and you're wasting a trinket slot. Another big downside for this trinket is the fact that the Shieldbreaker is one of the fastest units in the game, meaning that on turn 1, most likely the Shieldbreaker is not going to have a marked target to go and deal that extra 25% damage against, unless you have something like a quick draw occultist or some other very speedy unit that can throw out a quick mark like the Houndmaster or something. But in that case, you probably want to be just running a trinket that grants like 20% extra damage or something. You can run Legendary Bracer over this and it has very little downside and is not as situational. And you may think, well, it's only a rare trinket, but this is a Shieldbreaker trinket, so it means you have to beat four Nightmares to get this. Meaning you're going to be getting this a lot later than most of the very rare trinkets in the game that are boss drops, or... In fact, probably won't get it very quick at all because of the fact that it's luck-based depending on if you get a Nightmare or not. So yeah, Fang Spear Tip, GG, but... You're kind of the worst of this. Well, you're the best of the worst, at least. Moving on to number 9, we have the Ancestor's Bottle. This is a Shambler trinket, as in it's an ancestral trinket that is only dropped from the Shambler or from some of the Ancestor's packs you find in missions, and it grants the positive effect of plus 25% max HP at the cost of plus 50% food consumed, which isn't really that much of an issue, and plus 10% stress. Now, there is a rare trinket called the Life Crystal that grants plus 20% max HP, and the only downside is minus one speed. Now, what do you think is more important? Plus 50% food consumed, plus five max HP, and plus 10% stress, or one speed? And you have to kill a Shambler to get this. You know, this is in the same pool as stuff like the Ancestor's Candle, and the Ancestor's Lantern, and the Ancestor's Map. So those are like amazing trinkets. But then you get this piece of garbage flooding the pool and doing pretty much absolutely nothing. The problem with having extra max HP trinkets is you're going to need to refill that HP anyway. This isn't like protection where, oh, you take less damage, so healing is more effective. No, you're going to have to fill it up anyway. And unless you're using percentage heals, it's still going to take a fairly long time. Like, it doesn't matter if your HP is 200 or 50. Like, a heal of 9 is only going to heal you for 9 points. So... At least, things like people running Martyr's Seal on Flagellant makes sense, because he has a percentage-based heal for himself, so it heals more. But this... I mean, unless you're running this on, like, Flagellant or someone who's going to be healed by a Flagellant or, like, camping skills, it's not worth it. Up at 8th place, uh, this was a toss-up between this and number 7, but I gave this one a bit of a higher spot, because it does something more impactful. That being the Tyrant's Tasting Cup. So, this is a Jester Trinket for Crimson Court, and it gives him plus 33% stress skills at the downside of plus 25% stress. So, this does give the Jester a bit of a boost in, well, especially during camping when he has his best abilities, but it does buff his normal stress healing move. This equates to roughly plus 4 stress healed at max level, which isn't that much really, but it is something. So, yeah, I really can't defend this trinket. This is a Crimson Court trinket that's downside is plus 25% stress, and that is a lot of stress. That turns a 20 stress into a 25 stress. So, 
one for one if you get stressed and then get stress healed on the Jester with, like, say, I don't know, a Coldest Witch attack, you are still going to be walking out with one point of extra stress. And that's kind of inexcusable considering that you're using a trinket slot for this. So, Tyrant's Tasting Cup is just, this is just garbage. Onto another Crimson Court Trinket, these are the Atonement Beads at number 7. Now, yeah, it was a toss-up between which of the two Crimson Court Trinkets I put on this list to be in this slot, but I believe Atonement Beads is a bit worse. So, the upside of it is 15% damage melee skills and 8% crit melee skills, which basically means that Mace Bash is going to be dealing more damage and having more crit. And the downside is minus 15% virtue chance, meaning your Vestal is going to be hard pressed to virtue. This can be avoided by the fact that, of course, you can just stress heal and your Jestal, no, your Vestal, or maybe you're going to be using Jestal with this. Your Vestal will not be getting afflicted anytime soon. But the thing is, is the upside worth it? The answer is really no, because Mace Bash is kind of a garbage move due to the fact that it has fairly low accuracy, and the damage isn't that great. And 15% damage in 8 crit, just for that, is... it's not that good. It doesn't matter if you're running like Profane Scroll to give it even more buffs or anything like that. Mace Bash just does so little, it's not worth investing into. Like, if you want to run a melee hero that can heal, run like, I don't know, Healing Crusader, or better yet, Flagellant. You're going to have Flagellant because this is a Crimson Court trinket, of course. So how would you get it otherwise? And yes, of course, being a Crimson Court trinket it is very hard to get early game. Unless you're lucky. Well, I'd say unlucky with this trinket because you don't want to get this one. Number 6 on the list, we have Lens of the Comet. Now, you're excused if you don't know what this trinket is because nobody runs this for a very good reason. What this does is, it makes a hero ignore stealth at the cost of 20% virtue chance. But, it also has another upside. You get plus 5 crit if you have some shard dust in your inventory. That's a bit... not very reliable to do. So, first off, we're gonna talk about shard dust. Shard dust is what you bring to refresh a character's one use per combat skills. So basically, you're going to use this on, like, the leper when you're fighting a boss or something like that. Or maybe even the highwayman. And in that case, if you're going to fight a boss and have shard dust in your inventory for the extra crit, you really won't be needing the ignore stealth, because... I mean, let's count on our hands how many bosses use stealth. We have... And that's about it. So, yeah. Good old Lens of the Comet. Well, you may be thinking, well, I can use the Ignore Stealth normally. Well, if you really cared that much about ignoring stealth, there is a quirk that does that. Sure, you can only have it on one hero in the roster, but you can, in theory, try and mold who gets it, or focus on it early on in the run, so you can get like a, I don't know, a Highwayman that does that or something like that. Or you could just ignore stealth completely by using Cleaves. So, Lens of the Comet, just why? This costs 25 shards, so it is the cheapest item to get from the shard dude. But that's still 25 shards you're wasting and not spending on something else. On the other end of the shard battle, however, up at good old number 5, so we're halfway there, we have the Code of Many Colors, which commits multiple sins in Darkest Dungeon. First off, let's discuss the cost of this crystalline trinket. 180 shards. This is one of the most expensive items in the game for shards. Like, you can build districts with this, or you could get this absolutely garbage trinket. So, what does it do? Well, when the hero equipped with this kills a monster, they gain minus 2% stress taken for two battles, and plus 2% accuracy for two battles. And if the hero equipped with this dies, it stuns your team at 120% base, and stresses them out for 25 points each. Now, this is a bit of an enigma, because, like, if your hero is getting kills, they obviously have enough accuracy, so they won't need a 2 accuracy buff. And sure, it lasts for 2 battles, meaning that this is pretty much only useful and endless. So, 
on, on, on Endless, most people run, like, Jester or something to increase accuracy, or Man at Arms for Command or something like that. So you can't really afford to run low accuracy tr heroes like Aleppo and slap this on them for extra accuracy. Unless you already had revenge, but you don't want to be running revenge in Endless anyway, because it only has one use per battle. You can't use it on all the battles. Save it for the bosses. And the minus 2% stress is just pitiful. So let's assume, for instance, your hero kills 10 enemies in one combat. Then, congratulations, you have an extra 20 accuracy and minus 20% stress damage taken in the next combat, because most likely the combat will have ended. And then you go up against, like, a boss and it resets. So, you're not going to be able to chain together, like, a crazy amount of buff. And, like, accuracy isn't even the most important stat to get consecutive buffs off of. That would be, like, damage or crit. So basically, Code of Many Colors is a huge investment. And you want to know what makes this even worse? There is an achievement for having a hero die with the Code of Many Colors. Meaning, if you want to get all the achievements in the game... You're going to have to buy this, and have a hero die with it, most likely an Endless because they come back, but still. Why? On to number four, and we are still not out of the Color of Madness content yet. Here we have the Prismatic Heart Crystal. This is a very, very uncommon trinket to see, considering that it drops rarely from killing Thing from the Stars. Now, what does this trinket do? Well, it gives you 35% Blight skill chance versus the Thing from the Stars, and it gives you plus 35% bleed skill chance versus the thing from the stars, and it gives a massive 12% crit versus thing from the stars. Now, you may think, well, these are some pretty good buffs. Well, when you consider the fact that thing from the stars isn't even guaranteed to show up in a mission, like if you see it on the map, it's still only a 50% chance that the dude even shows up. And when you consider the fact that thing from the stars cures its own bleeds and blights, at the start of its turn, then you realize that the Bleed and Blight skill chance isn't really important, and the extra crit if you're using a Bleed and Blight skill chance for the extra turns doesn't matter, because you, you won't last five turns anyway. And even in late fight, the extra 12% crit probably doesn't matter, because you can't get through the protection, unless you're specifically running this on a Shield Breaker, or like, a Grave Roller with Pick to the Face. At which point, you should just consider running a better trinket. Like, run a focus ring or something like that. Ancestor's pen. Some garbage like that. Not this. And number three. This is a... I, I don't think anyone, like, has literally ever ran this trinket. Number three is the Countess's fan. This is a trophy trinket. The only one on this list. And it drops from the Countess, one of the hardest bosses in the game. Probably the hardest boss, if you don't count the Fnatic. Now... What do you get for this trinket that you've suffered so greatly to get? Well, you get a massive 50% healing received if you have Crimson Curse. Sounds decent. What's the downside? Minus 25% bleed resist if you have Crimson Curse. Now, your bleed resist is already lowered if you have Crimson Curse, and lowering it an extra 25% is not good. You would never run this, because Bleed is one of the most common debuffs in the game. Or dots in the game, if you'd prefer to use that term. And I'd like to point out another trinket that you can get very... Well, if you're lucky, you can get it pretty early in the game. It's called the Recovery Charm. What it does is it gives you 40% healing received for no downside and no conditions. So you could either gain Crimson Curse and receive an extra 50% healing and lose 25% bleed resist on top of what you already lost with Crimson Curse, or you could downgrade to the Recovery Charm for the mere downside of minus 10% healing received compared to the Countess's Fan, and the upside is you don't lose all your bleed resist. Don't use Countess's Fan, it is bad. Number two, what a great trinket we have here, the Husk Fang Whistle. What this trinket does, in case you have never used it, which, hey, good on you, you know what a good trinket is. It gives you an extra 50% bleed skill chance if dog treats are in your inventory, meaning that you will not be punished for saving the dog treats all mission because you forgot about them. It also gives you a plus 40% stress skills while guarding, that means, hey, 
Cry Havoc is an extra 40% stronger. That's pretty good. That's better deal than the Tyrant's Tasting Cup. It also increases your guard duration by 66%, meaning that the guard doesn't effectively last for like one turn. So, in case you are not familiar, Houndmaster in the base game, and not Butcher's Circus because they actually fixed it in that, Houndmaster's guard only lasts for one turn, meaning that if you want to keep your guard up, you have to be guarding with that Houndmaster every one of his turn. But with the Huskfang Whistle, you don't need to, because you will have one turn in between. And what do you do with that one turn in between? Well, you stress heal. Oh, oh wait, hang on. Huskfang Whistle has a downside. Um, minus 10 dodge for a unit whose guard gives him dodge so he doesn't get hit. Why? That's basically like giving the man at arms a trinket where the downside is minus 20% protection. Just, just why? His one form of survivability and reason to use the guard is so that your units do not get hit because he dodge tanks them. But you finally give him a trinket that increases the guard duration so that it's fairly reliable and you lose the one reason to use the guard. Like, do you really want to use this and then have a Houndmaster go Guard, stress heal, guard, stress heal, guard, stress heal, or guard, hounds, harry, guard, hounds, harry, guard, hounds, harry. No, you probably don't, because you're going to need to spend like half your turns healing because he's going to get hit so much because of the minus 10 dodge, mitigating the one upside the handmaster really has with his guard. Ugh. Also, this is a uh, crystalline trinket, meaning you can't get it as a random drop, you have to spend 70 shards on this, which doesn't sound like that bad of a deal, but then you realize that stuff like the Spectral Spear Tip is 65 and the Ashen Distillation is 45. Broken Key is 30. You could get, like, the Broken Key and the Ashen Distillation for just 5 more shards than this. That's nothing. But, surprisingly, there's actually one trinket that is worse than the Huskfang Whistle. Now, before we get to number 1, I'd like to put an honorable mention to the Holy Orders, being a 15% Virtue Chance, minus 20% Stress, plus 12% Death Blow Resist, minus 20 Blight Resist, and Bleed Resist. This would have been number 11, but it barely didn't make the list because Fang's Spear Tip is just a bit worse than this. So, yeah, good job Holy Orders, you somehow managed to not make it onto the worst trinkets list of all time. And the absolute worst trinket in all of Darkest Dungeon is... The Mantra of Fasting. So, what exactly does the Mantra of Fasting do? Well, it gives you plus 40% max HP if Crimson Curse wasting, aka if you have the Crimson Curse and you're on the wasting status. It also gives you plus 7 speed under the same conditions. Now... This sounds pretty good, 7 speed is massive, and so is 40% HP, that's better than the Ancestor's Bottle. Well, when you consider the fact that wasting reduces your max HP by 20%, and your speed by 4, it's effectively plus 20% max HP and plus 3 speed. So, alright, that's, that's not bad, surely there's worse than that, right? Right? Well, Mantra of Fasting does not protect you from act outs or barks from characters that are wasting. So, your character can randomly move forwards, pass their turn, stress your team, and all for what? A bit of HP and speed. Another thing that the Mandra of Fasting does, well, or doesn't do, is actually stop you from getting out of wasting. Meaning that if you are wasting, there is a chance that at the start of your character's turn, or upon moving to a new tile, they die because they have the Crimson Curse and you didn't feed them because they're wasting. Is risking dying worth a tiny bit of speed and HP? No, not really. That's why this is the worst trinket of all, because not only is it bad and detrimental because it forces you into a bad position, it is the only trinket on this list that incentivizes your characters being almost killed. Sure, the Martyr Seal does that as well, but the Martyr's Seal actually protects you from being on Death's Door and gives you decent benefits. And most of the time you're just running it on like a flagellant or something. Mantra of Fasting is... You, you can't save yourself from the Crimson Curse. It will kill you. It doesn't matter how much HP you have, it doesn't matter how much stress you have, it kills. So... You could instead run... Like, at the cost of 4 speed, you could run like a Life Crystal. And get that HP, and you didn't have to be Crimson Cursed and about to die. Or you could risk life and limb for a little bit of bonus. I think I've gone on long enough about how bad the Mantra of Fasting is. 
I'd like to see someone try to use Mantra of Fasting successfully for something, but I wouldn't do my worst enemies to wanting all their heroes dead. Well, I hope you enjoyed my list of the top 10 worst trinkets in Darkest Dungeon. If you think I made a mistake or missed something off the list, uh, comment in the bottom description or whatever it is, and I'll check those out. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys in the next thing that I post, whether it be Darkest Dungeon related or not, maybe. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.